Hi students and welcome to today's live IELTS class. My name is Adrian. I'm streaming to you from beautiful Victoria here in Western Canada. I hope everybody is having an awesome week so far. Welcome everyone. Welcome Carolina, our chat moderator. Welcome Amra, Amu. Good to see our members joining in. Hi, Irani, Rano, Vicky. Good to see many members or many students as well. Uh, nice to see you all. Uh, students, in this class, we are focusing on IELTS speaking part one. We usually kick the week off with IELTS speaking part one to get everybody uh, warmed up and fluent in English. And this IELTS speaking part one today that we will practice with students and we will speak with students, uh, give band scores and uh, tips and strategies to improve, will focus on cars and buses. Um, popular topics uh, for sure for the IELTS exam. Transportation is a major uh, part of uh, everyday life and IELTS uh, speaking part one is usually a general topic that can be uh, relevant for every uh, person. Cars and buses certainly uh, relevant for uh, most people in the world for sure. And we're into June, so happy June everybody. We are on June 2nd uh, today in the morning here in West Coast Canada. Amrit, I am doing fantastic. All right, everyone. Uh, so again, uh, IELTS speaking, cars and buses. Um, there you go, that is today's focus. And this lesson is presented to you by aehelp.com for academic IELTS. Visit us there for general IELTS, gieltshelp.com. In fact, we will be using our websites today uh, for speaking. The websites, you can speak to other students and you can speak to tutors. This is our academic website here at uh, aehelp.com. Uh, so you can go there to join um, and uh, you can click this big red button that's just above my head there. Um, to join the premium IELTS package. It's a one-time payment for lifetime access. If you want to try it for free first, then uh, this green button here, that's right behind me. Let me just scroll up a bit there. The green button right behind me. Um, and for today's lesson, please register a free account, if not a paid account, so that you can volunteer to speak, okay? Uh, for general IELTS, it's the same idea. It's the green background, and again, click that big red button. We are an official British Council uh, test registration center and certified agents, so you're in great hands with us, everybody. And uh, you can use this code um, X, if I remember off the top of my head, XR9T. Uh, for a 25% discount on the premium IELTS package. So use that. All right, students. Um, so yeah, use that code. Actually, no, sorry, we got a new code, CARS20 for a 20% discount as well. Mm, okay, my bad. Um, all right, uh, and um, our apps are Academic IELTS Help and general IELTS help at in your app store. Uh, the apps will connect to the website, so uh, it's great for learning anywhere, anytime. Instagram IELTS underscore AE help and G IELTS help. And if you want to send me an email because you have a question, uh, that is always a good idea to get your questions answered before you sit your IELTS exam. Send me an email to Adrian at aehelp.com. Okay, so we've got lots of classes this week. Uh, we've got uh, speaking part one right now. Okay, 
And then uh, we will have uh, task one um, for members. Tomorrow we'll have listening uh, part one and two for subscribers tomorrow as well. Then we'll have speaking part two and speaking part three on Saturday. So lots going on there. And if you want to check out our latest speaking interview with a candidate from Madhya Pradesh, India, then you can do that with this link here. That is our latest um, HD uh, speaking interview band nine example video. All right, um, and we've got free uh, speaking classes on Light Hall as well. Uh, so uh, later on in the month, definitely register for those. Those are really great. They're fun, they're interactive. You get to practice your speaking. Uh, we've got one on June 19th. I'm just putting these URLs in the chat. So if you're looking at the chat, you will see these. And then one on uh, June 26th. You'll also find these in our YouTube comments, okay? So that's it for all the preambles. Uh, we'll get right into our IELTS speaking as well, okay, right now. Uh, so the IELTS speaking exam, you definitely want to get a um, good score on your uh, speaking and writing and for the IELTS by the way it's the the speaking score like I don't nobody's ever asked me this question but it's kind of an interesting one so I'm going to give you this question um, which scores are the most important in IELTS uh, when you uh, apply for schools and immigration. So, of course, your overall band score is very important because you know you need a 6.5 or a 7 or a 7.5 for your visa or your school. So, overall uh, score needs to be uh, at least uh, 6.5, uh, sometimes uh, 7 or 7.5. Right, um, and then they often will say no section less than six, okay, which is fine. People don't really talk about this, but there is actually a level of importance, especially if you're applying for a job, for work, like a nurse, um, for the different sections. So um, here's an interesting question, which section is the uh, most important to get a high band score. And sometimes they will actually say that you need a band score seven or better in this section. So what do you think? Is it um, speaking? Is it listening? Um, is it writing? Or is it reading? So which, which section do you think people are, or the offices where you're applying, they're usually uh, most concerned where they want to see a high score. Armreed says maybe listening. Carolina says speaking and listening. Ruslan says all important. No, actually speaking is the most important. So speaking is the most important because this skill usually, well, this skill is the most used and it usually means that you have the potential to improve the other skills quickly with practice, okay? So if you have a, a good speaking score, that's the most important because that's what you will use the most. So when you're talking to your colleagues, when you're talking to other people in society, when you're talking to your classmates, we speak more than we write or read or um, listen, unfortunately. <laughs> At least we listen too, but <laughs> we speak more. I do, anyway, that's for sure. Um, but uh, if you're like me, you definitely want to speak. 
Um, so speaking is, is arguably the most important skill. Also, the other point with speaking is if you can speak well, if you can communicate well, then that means with a bit of practice, you can probably listen, read, and write well also, okay? Because to speak well, generally, you do have to be able to read, uh, write, and listen well also. Okay. Speaking is a product of those skills and even if those scores are lower, it likely just means that the person needs some coaching on how to listen, read and write and their scores will improve quickly. So speaking is the most important and for work in school, writing is the second most important. Again, if you can write well, it also in most cases means that you can read well with a good bit of coaching. So keep in mind that uh, when you speak and when you write, you produce information. With listening and reading, you are comprehending information. So when you can read well and listen well, it still might take a lot of practice before you can speak and write well, but not true the other way around. Does that make sense? So when you can listen and uh, read well, it may still be a while to speak and write well. Um, because these are the applications, okay? So if I see a high score in speaking and writing, but a lower score in listening and uh, reading, I imagine that that student would likely be able to improve those skills faster than the other way around. Hopefully that kind of makes sense, right? So hopefully that's logical for everybody. So let's get you speaking well. Okay, that's why if you're getting a low score in speaking, then your main focus should be speaking. Okay, so if your uh, speaking section uh, score is low, you must uh, focus most of your time and energy on improving your professional communication uh, and I should say your professional oral oral means spoken uh, communication okay so um, what does that mean uh, what is professional um, oral spoken communication or we can call it academic. When we say professional or academic, they're basically synonyms. So um, in school, uh, in university, uh, when you're practicing your academic skills, you're really practicing for your professional skills, okay? The, that's the next step. So you're learning academics to then use in professional life, right? So um, what is uh, professional academic uh, oral communication. How would you describe that? So give me some uh, give me some thoughts here. Okay, I don't want to just feed you information. I want your ideas. So if I walked up to you right now and said, you know, hey, I'm Reet, or uh, viral video, or Sapana, um, what is what is professional academic oral communication? What are the requirements? Right. So what would you tell me? Okay, what would be your answer? What would be your list? Okay, Ahmed, thanks for that. <laughs> That's very kind of you. Um, so what would, what would that be? How would you define it? Okay, well, Harsh says formal way, but yeah, what does that mean? What does formal way mean? So formal, informal, those are subjective ideas. Uh, we want some concrete, usable, actionable um, ideas here. So. Uh, 
actionable, usable ideas. Okay, so what are they? So what is, um, okay, so Dipti says good pronunciation, good vocabulary, sure. All right. Um, Uma says coherent and fluent, sure. Okay. All right. So far, so good. Our list is doing all right. Okay. Um, so these obviously are, some of you are realizing, these are the points that IELTS is marking you on. Um, grammatical range, uh, sure. Okay, um, accurate grammar, sure. Okay, all right. Um, okay, so we've kind of listed um, the, um, the, marking criteria of um, the IELTS exam. So let me take it um, a step further then, and I see a lot of people are saying that. Um, what is professional pronunciation? So what is that? What, what do you think would be considered um, professional pronunciation? Okay. All right. Yeah, so Uma, expressing ideas clearly would be coherent. Uh, tell me, my soul says, good sense of humor. I don't think so. Humor is not a part of professional communication. Um, but there is something interesting there, um, and we'll get to that. Okay, that will be in coherence. So let's kind of break these down a little bit more because I think, you know, if you look at IELTS, if you look at their marking criteria, um, that will make sense. But what is professional pronunciation? Okay. So Yarabisha says, pronounce a word the way they're meant to be. I don't think that's true, Yarabisha. But what you said after is, you said, easy to understand. Okay, sure. And um, how can we make pronunciation easy to understand? So Pachu says, intonation, speed, stresses. Yeah, absolutely. And you hear that with my voice, right? You hear the intonation, the speed, the stresses, right? It's not native speaking, Abbas. There's nothing to do with not native speaking. Okay. Um, I can understand a person with an accent from India much, much easier than a, a native speaker from Scotland or Ireland. Um, so uh, a native speaker doesn't matter, okay? Some non-native accents are actually easier to understand than some native speaking accents. So uh, it has nothing to do with being a native speaker. You can get a band nine in your pronunciation without being a native speaker, okay? All right. Um, so what else is needed for pronunciation? There's, a, there's one more word here that I would love to see. Okay. <clears throat> and this is the one that a lot of people miss and they have trouble with um, during the IELTS. It's confidence. Okay. Now that might sound um, weird, but it is an extremely important part of your pronunciation to be confident. Okay. Um, so believe in what you say and how you say it. Okay. All right. When you look at people like Steve Jobs um, or Elon Musk, um, these are very popular figures. Of course, Steve Jobs no longer with us. But if you ever saw a speech by these people, you notice that one of the reasons they're so powerful in their speaking is because of their exceptional confidence, okay? Con element of good pronunciation. So everybody 
clear on that. So is everybody um, with me? Is everybody clear on that? Okay. So confidence, extremely important for all parts of communication, but it's very important for pronunciation. Confidence will lead to good pronunciation. I'm very confident in what I'm telling you about communication and IELTS, so it's likely that you can understand me quite well, okay? All right, um, vocabulary. So you need good vocabulary, absolutely. And that means you need to be able to choose accurate vocabulary in context. Okay. Um, now, there is another element that's very important for coherence and the vocabulary that you use, okay? Let's just jump to uh, coherence for now, so to be coherent. And for those of you who aren't sure what we mean by that, it means um, to understand, okay? So clear understanding. So what do you think is needed uh, for a clear understanding? So what's needed to be coherent at the professional or academic level or the band seven, eight, nine level, okay? What is crucial? Crucial means very important. What is crucial for coherence at the band seven, eight, nine levels. Okay, this is a very important question for you to think about. Okay. Okay, me here says connection with the question. So yeah, um, absolutely. So reflecting the question, um, which basically means staying on topic, right? Okay. That's a good one, and I often mention that one, okay? There's another very important element. So a couple of you said that. Logical thinking, yep. Um, yep, good composition, so good uh, grammar and uh, use of vocabulary, absolutely. If you're using the wrong words or if the grammar is way off, it becomes very difficult to understand, all right? Um, coherence means cohesion, right, of course, so connection. Sure, you need to be connected, you need cohesion. Um, what else? There is one other element and it's kind of, so again, it's attitude, okay? So in the previous one, when we talked about pronunciation, I said that confidence is absolutely uh, key um, in uh, good pronunciation. So what kind of attitude do you think, or what kind of thought is really important for coherence? Okay. Let me give you a little bit of a, a hint. Who makes sense of what you're saying? And this is the magical word. This is the magical word to be human. If you can master this thought or this attitude, then you can master IELTS and you can be very successful in life as well. And you will be thought of as a great person as well. So what do you think that is? For great coherence, you need to have, well, you can have two words here. One would start with an S, the other with the E, and they're kind of like this. So this one is, it's got four missing letters here, and another word is, starting with that, and has four missing words. So, what do you think that is? It's not emotion. Emotions are important. There you go, Anima's life. Very good. Empathy. 
you need empathy or you need sympathy. Okay, why do I say that? So why do I say that you need empathy or that you need sympathy? Why am I emphasizing this or why am I emphasizing uh, these two words so much? Okay, it's very important to think about that. All right, good communication, good professional communication, they need great empathy and they need good sympathy. Okay, because you have to speak in a way where you're thinking about your audience. In this case, you're thinking about the examiner. Okay, so um, f for instance, so often when I talk to students, um, and I ask them a question like, um, uh, do you work or study? Okay, it's a very common question for IELTS speaking part one. And then the candidate will answer something like, um, I'm studying um, uh, MEG at at uh, U of T uh, right now and um, I use uh, mo and I use mostly uh, my um, social media to uh, follow new topics in my field especially IG and it's like okay what is MEG what is U of T what is IG okay so oftentimes students are speaking like they're speaking to themselves and that doesn't work really well um, especially not for the IELTS interview where you're talking to a complete stranger and potentially someone who is not even from your country or your culture okay so keep that in mind Right, this is a very important tip for you to do well in the IELTS speaking section. Okay, so often IELTS candidates uh, speak as if they are speaking to themselves or a friend and not a complete stranger that may not even be from their country or culture. Okay. So you have to keep that in mind. You're talking to a stranger, potentially someone who is from a different country, from a different culture. So you can't say things like, I'm studying MEG at the U of T right now and I mostly use social media to follow uh, new topics in my field, especially IG, okay? Um, you would have to say something like, I am currently uh, studying Masters of Engineering at the University of Toronto um, in Eastern Canada and to stay up to date with uh, current news in my field I use a social app on my phone called Instagram okay so this first one would be the non-empathetic example and the second one would be the empathetic example and notice how you have a lot more vocabulary and fluency okay so that's a big big difference now of course that's an extreme example and some of you might be thinking like well adrian i don't i don't do that right i i speak clearly and that's fantastic i'm not saying that you know you're this extreme uh, but you do want to pay attention. So um, when you practice for your IELTS speaking, definitely check yourself, okay? So ask yourself constantly, okay? Uh, record your answers. Okay, listen and ask yourself 
can a complete stranger clearly understand what I'm saying? And if they, if your answer is no, then start to think about why not, right? So why not? Okay, um, so that was me leading you down a very windy kind of long path to um, really put uh, emphasis on the importance of having confidence and empathy in your speaking. And I know that was kind of a long road and some of you are probably thinking, Adrian, why didn't you just say, speak with confidence and speak with empathy? Um, yeah, I, I can do that, but it might not be effective. You might not actually end up remembering and doing it. So that's why I took the longer road to these two points, okay? And I can see some students appreciated that, which is awesome. Okay, so let's practice this, okay? So the focus in today's class will be speaking with confidence and speaking with empathy. Everybody got that? Okay, so speak with confidence and empathy. Okay, and let's start practicing, all right? And I'll give you more strategies on how to do that, okay? So first of all, use the question in your answer, give clear explanations and examples. Okay, remember, I don't know what you know. I don't know what country you're from. I don't know what city you're from. I don't know what you had for breakfast. I don't know how much time you spend playing games on your phone. And I don't know what a long time on your phone is to you versus me. Maybe a long time for you on the phone, on your mobile is 10 hours a day. For me, it's more than an hour. Okay, so I don't know you, I don't know what you know. You have to be clear with me, all right? Okay, so you're in your speaking and your speaking starts and you go into the exam room and the examiner says, welcome to the speaking section of the IELTS exam. My name is Adrian, I will be your examiner for this part of the test. May I see your identification, please? Okay, give me a nice full sentence answer for this one. Okay, nice full sentence answer. Type it into the chat. Everybody, I am looking at the chat, so uh, put it into the chat. See, the chat is right here. I'm looking for your answers. Okay, and I have this answer here by uh, Nitu. Okay, so Nitu says, um, sure, sir, please have a look. Okay. All right, let's take a couple more and then I will give you feedback. So this is from Nitu in the chat, okay. Um, Isa uh, Dorothy says this, this is our member, Isa says, um, here's my passport that I use to subscribe for this test. Okay. All right, um, Erkin says, yes, um, certainly. Here is my passport that I have used for registration. Uh, please have a look. Okay. And then Rashika says, um, Yes, here is my passport that I used to register for this exam a couple of weeks ago. Please have a look. Okay. So let's imagine that, um, that uh, Nitu and uh, Isa and Erkin and Rashika are all saying this fluently and confidently, okay? 
So Nitu confidently says, and please repeat after me, okay? So this is speaking, so make sure to uh, repeat and copy what I say, okay? So repeat and copy what I say. Here we go. So Nitu says, sure, sir, please take a look. Here's my ID. Uh, Isa says, here's my passport that I used to subscribe for this test. Okay, Erkin says, yes, certainly. Here's my passport that I have used for registration. Please have a look. Rashika says, yes, here's my passport that I used to register for this exam a couple of weeks ago. Please have a look. Okay, um, here's my question to you. Which of these answers has the highest degree of empathy in the situation? Empathy is always measured for the situation. So which of these answers has the highest level of empathy for the context or situation? So in essence, I'm also asking which one of these answers do you think the examiner uh, will like the most? As long as you say it fluently and confidently. Of course, fluency and confidence is important. So which one is the most empathetic thinking about the examiner? Sure, sir, please take a look. Here's my passport that I used to subscribe for this test. Yes, certainly, here's my passport that I have used for registration, please have a look. Or yes, here's my passport that I used to register uh, for this exam a couple of weeks ago, please have a look. Okay, Ahmed says Rashika, Erkin says Nitu, uh, Yarabisha says Rashika, Marvelous Adiyoye says Erkins. So most of the answers are coming up as either um, Erkin or Rashika, right? So we're getting um, either Erkin being voted as uh, number one uh, or Rashika being voted as number one. Why? Why? Um, and it's arguably accurate. I would say Rashika number one and then Erkin number two. So, okay. Um, in this case, uh, Rashika uh, has the most empathetic response and Erkin the second uh, why okay um, Jasmine says it is clear viral video says because it is fluent um, Isa says because of the please have a look the politeness um, Mm, those are okay answers, but there's a better answer. Because, I'll tell you why, okay, if you're not getting it so far. Um, if I'm the examiner, Rashika's response tells me that she prepared for the exam and carefully paid attention uh, to the rules uh, because she has told me that the passport uh, is the same as the one she used to register and she um, registered at least two weeks prior okay so if I'm the examiner um, it gives me confidence as the examiner um, or it gives me um, a sense of belief 
when I feel that, oh, okay, this student prepared for this speaking test and they prepared for the IELTS. They read the rules, they're being polite, and they're showing me that right away from the beginning. They're being fluent, so I don't have to fight to get information from them. And here, Rashika very clearly says that this is the passport I used to register for this exam. So indirectly, she's telling me that she knows that this passport has to be the same that, I, that she used for registration, that she used for sign-in, okay? And she uses a couple of weeks ago, okay? So this gives me already this idea that Rashika is thinking about the fact that I don't know her, I don't know what she's up to, I don't know what she's been doing. So she's speaking with a high degree of clarity. Okay, this couple of weeks ago immediately tells the examiner that here's a person who communicates with clarity, who is thinking about my knowledge of them, of their actions. Okay, does that make sense? Okay, so she is empathetic to me as the examiner who doesn't know her, who doesn't know how much she prepared or when she did or when she didn't, okay? And that's why it has the highest degree of empathy in her communication right from the beginning, okay? So we kind of have the same situation for the next question. The next question is, what is your full name? Okay, hopefully that makes sense, all right? So give me a sentence for this. What is your full name? Okay. Um, Haj says, my full name is uh, Ravshan Hajili. You can call me just Ravshan. All right, that's pretty good. Nitu says, my full name is Vaiga Shrijith. Uh, please call me Vaiga. Sana says, my full name is Sana uh, Sohail, but you can call me Sana, okay? Amra says, my first name is Amra, and my family name is Abasov. Please call me by my first name, Amra, okay? Um, good. Natasha uh, Melvinci says, my name is Natasha Melvinci, as you can see in my identification card. You can call me Natasha. Okay, good. So these are all good. Um, this would be my answer if you want the most empathetic. So I'm going to give you the most empathetic, okay? All right, so my first name is Thomas and my uh, surname is uh, McKinley. Uh, please just call me Tom uh, for short, okay? So this would be the most empathetic way uh, to answer that question. Um, keep in mind that first names and last names uh, change in different cultures. Um, you can call me is not as polite as please call me. Okay, keep that in mind, all right? So um, sometimes uh, when I travel, you know, and I say my first name is Adrian, they're like, oh, so that's like your family name. Because in some cultures, you say your family name first and then your given name second. Um, and that's why I made sure to say surname instead of last name, okay? And that's why it's common in Britain to use given name and surname. And in the US, they use first name, last name. Okay, because UK, United Kingdom, or Britain, England, um, Scotland, Ireland, they're closer, they're in Europe, of course, and in Europe, uh, different countries have different orders of first, last names. So that's why, for clarity, they use given name and surname in British English. It makes more sense, okay? In the US, it's further from Europe, and they just say first name and last name, okay? It's kind of a cultural difference.
okay? Uh, you can call me is um, a bit forward. I definitely recommend saying, please call me, okay? So the most empathetic way to respond in this question is my first name or my given name is Thomas and my surname is McKinley. Please just call me Tom for short. It's a very professional, polite way to do it. Okay, um, and then comes this question here. Uh, so the IELTS examiner will say, okay, for part one, I will ask you a couple of questions to get to know you better and some questions on a general topic. What do you do for fun? So give me a nice uh, full sentence for this one. Uh, Tahoe, when I did the IELTS exam, the examiner started recording right away before I was able to say my name and show my passport. So they don't actually start recording from part one necessarily. They record right from the beginning. And um, Tahoe, even if they start recording after the introduction, they are still judging you from the very beginning of your speaking. So it doesn't matter. Okay. All right, um, so Hodge says for this first question, so first question again is what do you do for fun? And Hodge uh, in our chat is saying, honestly, for fun, I can meet up with my friends and play each other or I can play computer games at home. Okay, Hodge, we'll talk about that in a minute. All right, Sai uh, um, says, I like to uh, play battle royale games either in smartphone or computer. Aman Kumar uh, says, Uh, to be honest, I usually watch funny video on social media for fun. Okay. All right. Um, Irani says... I like to party, travel, and go to tourist destinations with my friends uh, for fun. Okay. All right, Colwinder says, I watch my favorite TV show to entertain me. This is what makes me happy. Just the other day, I watched my favorite cartoon, Ben 10. All right, um, so let's take a look at these. Um, most of these are a band five to six. Only one is a band seven to nine. Which one? Okay, so all of these all of these answers are a band five to six, except one, which is a band um, seven to nine. Which one? Is it Hodge? Honestly, for fun, I can meet up uh, with uh, my friends and play each other. I can play computer games. Uh, is it Psy? who says, I like to play battle royale games either in smartphone or computer. Is it Aman, who says, to be honest, I usually watch funny video on social media for fun. Is it Irani, who says, I like to party travel and go to tourist destinations with my friends for fun. Or is it Cold Winder, who says, I watch my favorite TV show to entertain me. This is what makes me happy. Just the other day, I watched my favorite cartoon, Ben 10. So, um, 
only one of these is a band seven to nine. The other ones are all a band five to six. Who of these five IELTS students has the higher band score? Okay, we've got one Irani. We've got uh, somebody saying it's Cold Winder. Um, we've got a couple more saying it's Cold Winder. Yeah, Cold Winder is the right answer. So only Cold Winder has. has a band seven to nine potential here, depending of course on fluency and a little correction, but um, yeah, it's only Coinder. Why? And a lot of you are getting that because you're the audience, right? So you're listening to the answer and you're getting that, right? Okay. So, Keep this in mind, students. The most basic concept for coherence in communication or in speaking in any language is why and honesty. <laughs> okay. Um, so uh, this um, leading expression, honestly, and two of you used it, Aman used it as well, to be honest, right? Okay. Um, Amrit, I like your super chat donation and your question, but it's off topic, so please send that to me in an email and I'll respond to it, okay? Thanks for the super chat donation. Okay, so off-topic questions, um, save those for later or send it to me in an email. Okay, so let's get back to this. So honestly, okay, is not a very good leading expression, okay, especially not in professional or academic communication, okay? In everyday communication, even there, it's like, yeah, but all right, um, in certain contexts, but it's not, it's not good to use, so don't use it. Do not use honestly or honestly speaking <laughs> okay because even though the examiner will not say they're kind of like well, why wouldn't you be speaking honestly to me I'm a stranger I mean IELTS examiner and I don't even care if you're honest or not so um, the IELTS examiner does not care if you are honest or not and why wouldn't you be honest about what you do for fun uh, saying an expression just to say it is not professional communication Okay, uh, does that make sense? Okay, so honestly or honestly speaking, it's very awkward, especially for a basic question like what do you do for fun or do you work or study? Honestly, I'm working. It's like, <laughs> really, you had to be honest about that? Um, so so don't use that, okay? That's, it's, it's awkward, all right? Now, um, the most important point that we always want to include and this is our most human nature that's why small children ask this question a million times but adults do as well just in different ways is why okay so uh, Hajj this doesn't answer why So, Hajj, if you want to make your answer better, why do you like to meet up with friends and play or play computer games at home? Okay, what's the reason for that? How does why does that uh, allow you to have fun? Okay, um, Sai, even more confusing. If I'm your examiner, my question in my head right away is, what is a battle uh, royale game on a smartphone? 
I, I actually don't know. I, I don't play so many games. There's only one strategy game. And I truly, uh, Sai, don't know what a Battle Royale game on a smartphone is. I'm, I'm guessing it's like one of those ones where you build cities and towns and attack each other. But that's just a guess. You have to explain that to me. I, I don't know what that is. So I'm confused about even what you're doing, not why you're doing it. So there's no why here no example and i'm even confused about what you're really doing okay sai so sai really focus on empathetic speaking okay um aman says to be honest i usually watch funny videos on social media for fun okay uh why um why not on tv do you not have enough time? Do you not have a TV? Um, what is a funny video um, for you, Aman? Um, a cat um, trying to eat an apple? Okay, so I don't, I don't really get what you're, what you're doing and why you're uh, doing it. All right, Aman. So, and you're speaking honestly to me, but honestly speaking back, I don't really get what you're saying. So my response so far for Aman and Sai and Hajj is honestly, I don't really know what you're saying to me, okay? And I understand your English. I understand the word battle royale and I understand the words, but I just don't understand what you're telling me. Does that make sense, students? So, and Amand, uh, don't take it wrong. Um, I'm not picking on you guys. This is a very common situation for people where they're speaking as if they're speaking to themselves, not to a complete stranger, okay? Um, I'm uh, over 40 years old, so I don't know what somebody who's 20 years old is doing on their phone for the most part okay i'm just guessing all right um so uh, that's the other point that i didn't mention so this stranger that you're talking to is often from a different generation they might be two generations apart some examiners are in their 50s 60s you could be in your 20s you could be two generations apart okay so they really won't get what you're saying when you're just kind of telling them this and that. They're just kind of nodding and being like, yeah, okay, all right. Honestly, I really don't get what you're telling me. I'm a different uh, generation and from a different culture. You have to be extra clear for me, all right? Okay, Irani uh, says, I like to party, travel, and go to tourist destinations with my friends for fun because I am a social and curious uh, person. So I like uh, to be with others exploring the world. Um, last month, I uh, went to the Greek islands with my friend John and we had a blast. I just turned Irani your band six answer into a band nine answer, okay? The reason and that example to give clarity, okay? So everybody repeat after me. I like to party travel and go to tourist destinations with my friends for fun because I'm a social and curious person. So I like to be with others exploring the world. Last month, I went to the Greek islands with my friend John and we had a blast. All right, now I get what you do, Irani, and why you do it and where you do it, okay? So think about these what, why, where in that kind of a connected sense. And Colwinder did the best job of this, right? So Colwinder says, I watch my favorite TV show to entertain me. This is what makes me happy. So that's why he does it. It makes him happy. Okay, well, what kind of a show? Like watching cats trying to eat apples? I don't, <laughs> I don't know why I'm stuck on that visual. 
Um, but Cole Winder says, no, just the other day I watched my favorite cartoon, Ben 10. So obviously Cole Winder likes drawings, likes cartoons, which is fantastic. And one of those is called Ben 10, why not? Um, and uh, that's what made him happy. So I can empathize with Cole Winder, okay. Um, so even if I'm from a different generation or culture, I can, great. I can clearly put myself into Call Winder's shoes and empathize. Okay. And I guarantee you, the more that the examiner can empathize with what you're saying, the higher your band score. All right. Okay. So the more that the examiner can empathize with your response, the better your band score, guaranteed. All right, so um, that's what we're working on today and uh, let's uh, talk about cars and buses. Okay. So part one, we're going to talk about cars and buses, but instead of typing more and more, um, which is fine, you can keep doing that. That's still a great way to practice, especially if you don't have a chance to volunteer. But now we're going to actually talk to our um, viewers. Volunteers are what we need here. Um, and you can volunteer for speaking, okay? Uh, you need to go to aehelp.com and uh, if you don't have an account, register an account. You can register a free account or a paid account, up to you, okay? Um, and uh, then uh, click on student partner speaking. Make sure you allow the website and the browser to use your microphone. Check that you have the correct microphone settings careful if you're using a VPN and then you will see me um, as master in there in just a moment I'm not there yet and then you can message me and say I want to volunteer I'd like to volunteer and then we'll chat and I will give you real-time feedback all right exciting times here we go everyone I'm excited to meet some of you verbally um, so this is our academic IELTS website here at uh, aehelp.com, aehelp.com, okay, so that's where you're going. And then click on this big red button to join the premium package, get all of our lesson videos, our HD lessons, um, our exams, our interactive courses, it's absolutely worth the money. Or if you're not sure yet, you can just click that green button. It's right there and um, and try it for free. Okay, and then you go to your My Student account and in your My Student account, um, you click on this uh, blue student partner speaking to access the speaking interface. By the way, if you uh, like um, the speaking practice, if you want to practice your speaking with me, you can book a speaking session with me with the speaking interview practice button. Of course, that costs money. Um, so do that. So let's click on uh, student partner speaking. You gotta accept the terms. You'll see that little pop-up window. Don't be scared about that. That just means that you're responsible for your speaking. Please don't share your phone number, or your address. Okay, so you have to be responsible for your speaking. And then you'll see lots of people in the interface. And again, if you want to book a full speaking interview with feedback marking, uh, then it's that yellow button that's just up there. Okay, that's where you want to do it. And I can see Amra is uh, on the ball today. That's an idiom meaning that she is uh, ambitious and doing what she needs to do. Amra says, hello, sir, I want to be a volunteer. Sure, Amra, let's do this. So I will message you back. Okay, um, are you ready? 
Amra. And let me put my ears on. Okay. All right, here we go, everyone. Amra, it sounds like you picked up, but I can't hear you. Can you check your uh, device or um, your settings? And I will also do the same. Just give me a second. Make sure that it's not my fault. Okay. Actually, I can hear the pinging in my ears, so it can't be. My speakers must be working. Yeah. Okay, Amra, I can't hear you, so check out your settings. I'll try somebody else. Make sure it's not on my end. Okay. All right. Uh, let's try Ghazi. I know Ghazi's here in Canada, just on the other side. Okay. Um, yes. Are you ready? Okay, Ghazi, hopefully we can connect. And, you know, I go randomly through the list or I try to, not in an order from top to bottom so that everybody has the potential to, um, to be selected. And I see lots of volunteers, so I'll do my best to kind of move around. Okay. All right. Um, Ghazi, it sounds like you picked up as well, but I can't hear you, which is strange because usually I can um, hear Ghazi. That's not the best that I can't hear anybody. I don't know why because uh, my headphones working that's strange okay let me try something here uh, students let me try to do a reset you'll have to rejoin here everyone so just let me try to reset uh, or I will actually uh, log out and log back in let's try that first Okay, actually, you know what, let's do this. And then let's do that. And let's try this one more time. Okay, I don't know why I couldn't hear anybody there. That was unusual. Okay, so uh, just log back in everybody. I just kind of reset the chat server to see if that had something to do with it. Um, and then again, ping me, okay? So we'll, we'll reset that and then. Amra, let's try again. Okay, Amra, here we go. Okay. Yeah, let's try again. And then Ghazi, I'll try again with you as well, okay? All right. Yeah, my mic and my headphones are working because I can hear everybody pinging away here. And I can hear it ring. Hmm. I still can't hear you, Amra, which is kind of frustrating. I'm not sure what's going on there. Um, let me try with, um, yeah, I, I, I get that it's, <laughs> I get that it's not working. Um, so I'll try it again, okay. Uh, we'll try later. Okay. Um, it should work. Uh, let's see. Um, let's try with uh, let's try with another student. Something with my connection. Okay, maybe. All right. All right. Let's try. If not, we'll go back to text. It's fine. But uh, let's try again. We'll try with Amrit. It's sometimes connections between certain people. So let me see. It's ringing on my end, so I can hear it ringing. I just don't hear your voices when you pick up. And I'm 
I'm not sure why that is. Uh, okay, you know what? Actually, it could be my um, setting on the uh, website, maybe. Um, let me just check that out. Just give me two seconds, okay? going to be it I'm just looking for the audio settings for Chrome if you're wondering what I'm doing uh, it says it's accessing your microphone um, okay is it accessing my speaker um, I'll have to check that okay I'm not sure why it's not working on me. Yeah, I can see that. Okay, you know what? Um, we'll forego that type of speaking for this one and we'll just go back to doing it the traditional way for this class students and then I'll troubleshoot why I can't hear you, which is fine. Um, so we'll go back and we'll go through these questions uh, in the traditional way and I know a lot of students like that because they have trouble using the speaking anyway. So we'll go back to these part one questions and then um, actually uh, respond uh, through the chat and then instead of talking to me we'll set that up for the next classes in the week um, let's uh, I don't want to troubleshoot with 226 people that part so let's just answer these questions then in the chat and then speak and repeat okay so speak and repeat that way Ghazi says I prefer verbally I'm sure you do Ghazi but again um, I don't want to troubleshoot so let's do it this way okay so speak and repeat um, and uh, let's do it uh, so let's talk about cars and buses okay so here we go with question number one so you're in your IELTS exam you're sitting there you've done your introductions and now the examiner asks, how often do you use a car? How about a bus? Okay, so give me a nice full sentence answer for this one. I'm going to do the same and then we will compare our answers. Okay, all right. Okay, um, so Amra, says well I frequently use a car to be more precise four to five times a day the reason for that is it is very cozy and fast and if I'm late for an important business meeting I will reach out to that place quickly without any stress just today I use my car to reach this exam center okay Amra that's a pretty good answer you've got a couple of mistakes there I'll quickly correct those and then it'll be a nice high band uh, 8 to band 9 well, I frequently use my car to be more precise four to five times a day. That's good. The reason for that is it is very cozy and fast. And if I'm late for an, an important business meeting, I will reach that place, not reach out. That's incorrect in this case. I will reach that place quickly without any stress just today I used my car to get to this exam let's paraphrase that okay so that would be a good answer because you have an answer an explanation and an example so if you say that clearly that could be now a band 9 okay before that with the mistakes it would have been about a band 7 because reach out to that place is quite confusing you're misusing the phrasal verb reach out okay all right uh, Kevin Bowie says and again I'm looking at the chat uh, 
Uh, these days, I rarely travel by car because it is fuel intensive and the fuel prices are going through the roof. I do not get on a bus frequently either. It's just not time saving uh, to travel around my city, which is heavily congested during rush hours. To get myself from point A to point B, I hop on my trusty Honda Wave S uh, kickstand scooter like today to, <laughs> to get to this exam. Okay, Kevin, that's a wonderful answer. That would definitely be a band nine. All right, um, using uh, this type of language, fuel intensive is very nice. Okay, um, fuel prices are going through the roof is a nice idiom to use there. Okay, uh, and that works. All right, so again, Kevin's answer has an answer, an explanation, and an example. So these days, I rarely travel by car because it is fuel intensive and the fuel prices are going through the roof. I do not get on a bus frequently either. It's just not the time. Good Kevin, good for answering this question. How about a bus? Okay. Amra, to make this first one a band nine, um, you should start by saying, I rarely use the bus, but I frequently use my car or a car, okay? All right, um, and then the next question. So let's go through these questions again, repeat once I give you the corrected answer and I'll take different uh, people's answers from the chat at different times, okay? So here we go with this next one. Where is the last place you went to in a car? So answer this question. Where's the last place you went to in a car? All right, give me a nice full sentence answer for this one. Amra says, well, the last place I took a car was Bravo Supermarket, which is 500 meters from the government house. Since we always do a lot of shopping and buy plenty of goods, I took the car because the car's baggage is spacious enough. Okay. Um, Amra, if you're talking about the back of the car, it's called the trunk. Okay. So... I went uh, to the supermarket uh, with my car, uh, which is about uh, five clicks from my house because I needed to buy lots of groceries. And my car has a big trunk space. Okay, trunk is that back part of the car where you would put all of your groceries. All right, Natasha says in the chat, I'm looking in the chat for this, everyone. Um, the one nice thing about doing it this way, like I know you like to speak in these classes and I respect that. Uh, and I promise you we'll get that working for you next time. Uh, but the one nice uh, part of doing this is we can go through some more answers uh, this way. It's a little bit faster. Um, so everything has its ups and downs, right? Um, Natasha uh, Melvinci says, the last place I went using a car was this exam center. Uh, my mom drove me here using our sedan because she wants me to be comfortable with the situation. So she drove me here. Okay, Natasha, not bad. Uh, let's correct it a little bit to make it a band nine, okay? So here we go. Uh, the last place I went using a car was this exam center. 
My mom drove me here in our sedan. Let's get rid of that. In our sedan. Sedan is the noun. You don't need the word car. In our sedan. A sedan for everyone, it's a special type of, so it's the type of car. It's got, uh, it's your regular car car. So it's got the four doors and the trunk. Okay. Because she wanted me to be more comfortable with the situation. Uh, so she, instead of drove me here, it's repeating. So she uh, dropped me off on her way to work uh, just 10 minutes or eh, half an hour ago. Actually arrived to your speaking at least an hour before your exam, just an hour ago which gave me lots of time to prepare. There you go. <laughs> Even better, right? Okay, Natasha, so say that as an answer, okay? So the last place I went using a car was this exam center. My mom drove me here in our sedan because she wanted me to be more comfortable with the situation. So she dropped me off on her way to work just an hour ago, which gave me lots of time to prepare. Okay, Natasha, that would give you that perfect band nine response. All right. Okay, Pachu says, well, I use my car once a month to go to the supermarket because it saves me time and it's comfortable. Um, okay, last week I bought groceries. Be more direct, Pachu. So uh, when it, where is the last place? So you have to say the location, right? Where is the last place? Um, be specific. Okay, be more specific. All right, uh, Kiran says, I use my car on a regular uh, basis. I remember going to my uncle's place in my car, which is not far from where I live. It was yesterday. Okay, Kiran, that's good. Um, so use the question, the last place. All right, um, here we go, next question. Uh, when is it a good idea to take the bus instead of a car? Okay, give me a nice full sentence answer for this one. When is it a good idea to take the bus instead of a car? Okay. And let me give you lots of feedback here, so I'll go nice and fast, okay? All right, we even have a little car emoji there. I don't know where that came from. Okay. So Amra says, well, taking a bus is more advantageous than driving a car or taking a car if individuals commute to someplace frequently since commuting by bus is much cheaper and can save a lot of money instead of spending money on petrol, which costs an arm and a leg. Um, Amra, not plural, arms and legs, <laughs> okay? Um, just one arm, one leg, okay? Two years ago, I did it in that way when I was going to a tutor in preparation for my entry exams. Uh, two years ago, I did that when I frequently was going to a tutor in preparation for um, entry exams. All right, now it's a much better band score, Amra. So again, going from a seven to an eight or nine with those corrections. So repeat after me. Well, taking a bus is more advantageous than taking a car if individuals commute to someplace frequently. Since commuting by bus is much cheaper and can save a lot of money instead of spending money on petrol, which costs an arm and a leg. Two years ago, I did that when I frequently was going to a tutor in preparation for entry exams. All right. 
Um, let's see, education notes says this. Okay. When a person has to go on long trips, they should take a bus rather than a car because it is more cost effective. Um, and they can also spend their time with their near and dear ones rather than driving a car. Okay, that's a little bit confusing for me, that second part, education notes. Uh, near and dear ones is a bit awkward English, so I don't recommend using it. Uh, spend their time with their loved ones. Um, I think you do that in a car as well, but maybe you can focus more on them and the scenery, So, and they can also uh, focus their time with their loved ones and the scenery rather than paying attention to driving the car and becoming exhausted along the way. Okay, and here, education notes, you might want to include an example to be even clearer, right? I took my car on a 12 hour trip last year uh, to Florida and it was really tiring. Um, I wish I had taken the bus. Okay. Now it's that band nine and you have to say it fluently, okay? So repeat after me. When a person has to go on long trips, they should take a bus rather than the car because it is not only more cost effective, but they can also focus their time on their loved ones and the scenery rather than paying attention to driving the car and becoming exhausted. Um, I took my car on a 12 hour trip last year to Florida and was really tiring. I wish I had taken the bus. Okay. I'm surprised nobody said um, uh, during rush hour. So um, in many cities uh, like Victoria and Vancouver, um, it is better to take the bus uh, than the car during rush hour um, because the bus is faster since it has its own uh, lane. Um, yesterday, I got to work during uh, peak uh, traffic at 8 a.m. in just 10 minutes as where it took my colleague who lives next to me almost an hour with his car. Okay, it's actually true. So in the US and in Canada and in some uh, European countries for sure, um, I don't know about uh, other places, but uh, the bus is much faster during rush hour because it has its own travel lane. So it can go much, much faster. It's got a separate lane for the bus, okay? All right. Yeah, strange things in the world, right? Carolina, you uh, blocked uh, the students spamming and they're still able to spam. Just like, why am I not able to suddenly connect with students through our chat server? That was kind of weird as well. But we manage and you keep blocking and I keep going forward, right? And we keep learning. So um, here we go, everyone. Uh, repeat after me. In many cities like Victoria and Vancouver, it is better to take the bus 
than the car during rush hours because the bus is faster since it has its own lane. Yesterday, I got to work during peak traffic at 8 a.m. in just 10 minutes as where it took my colleague who lives next to me almost an hour with his car. Okay, read, repeat, and try to repeat without reading. All right, so we've got three more questions here, and I am going to go back to the chat here, everyone, um, as soon as I finish this class. So here we have the chat, and I'm going to try to finish the, I'm going to fix the chat after class. So if you want to try to speak with me, and you're, you've, you've got time, and you want to be a little bit patient, then uh, go back to the website, the speaking, and I'm going to kind of troubleshoot um, the speaking here after the class, and I will be on the website. You'll see me here. So you'll be able to speak with me. I'll, I'll kind of select a few different people uh, to try to speak with, and then we'll see what's going on, okay? Um, for the live class, we're going to stop here for now. Remember, you can still use this code, um, XR. 9t for that 25 percent discount simply go to the website um, and again on the website uh, click uh, the big red button that's just there to join our premium ielts package it's a one-time payment for lifetime access so it's well worth it and on the general ielts uh, it's the same idea it's this big red button here there you can find over a hundred of these um, speaking videos with uh, lots of uh, practice exams, interactive courses. Um, we've got uh, a lot of great content for you here. And again, everybody, if uh, you want to keep practicing your speaking, after the class you will find me here in the website as master. And you can ping me and we'll practice a couple questions. Okay, um, So uh, hang in there. I'll definitely try to figure out what's going on there so that we can uh, connect more in the live class next time. All right, and I'll ask you those last few questions or some of you who are still in there. All right, um, thank you, Carolina, for moderating, especially since, yeah, I blocked that person a couple times too, and it's amazing that with the same ID, they were able to get back into the chat even though I banned them. I don't know what was going on there. That's obviously YouTube, not us, um, but... Um, that's the class. So remember, two very important points from this class, right? Confidence and empathy get you high, high band scores. Uh, practice those. Check that you're uh, being empathetic to your examiner. They're different age, maybe different culture. You have to speak to them clearly, okay? All right, everyone. I'm Adrian. I'm signing out for now. Tomorrow, I will be back with more IELTS uh, for the writing and listening sections. Uh, so tomorrow, two classes, one class starting a bit earlier than today. And uh, again, if you have some time, go to the website, um, stay in the chat. I will be there in just a moment, and I'm going to check out what was happening there, and then we'll continue with this, okay? All right, everyone, that's it for now for me. I will see you tomorrow. I'm Adrian, I'm signing out from Victoria. Have an awesome rest of your day. Much love to all of you. Bye.